Hello everyone and welcome to Woma TV. I am your host Steve Hirschberger. Woma TV is brought to you every single month by the Word of Mouth Marketing Association and ComBlue. Okay, as you all know we always begin with a little bit of housekeeping so let's do that and get it out of the way. Registration for WOMU at the Swanky Blue Hotel in downtown Chicago is now open. Please register at WOMA.org and you'll save a boatload of money. If you haven't been to the Blue Hotel, trust me, you're going to want to go. So either figure out a way to get there or lie to your boss and tell them it's a requirement. Either way, we'll see you there. Okay, now let's dive in. Today's show topic is one that virtually every one of you that's involved in branding, marketing, and, and digital marketing is either touched directly or indirectly today. And for those of you that know about community management, you know how important the topic is. Those of you who don't know about community management, please pay close, close attention and learn. So with that, I'd like to introduce our guest today, Kate Weingartner. She is a community management expert, although I don't think that's how she describes herself on a day-to-day -day basis. Kate, how are you? Good. How are you, Steve? Good. So when you're not calling yourself a community management expert, what do you call yourself? Um, my current role is actually a social strategist um, at a digital agency called Wirestone. Um, in this social strategist role, I oversee a great team of community managers and help kind of oversee their day-to-day -day as well as see how that ladders up to a bigger strategy. Well, given your current role and your expertise within community management, how, how did you come to the topic of, of community management? Is it something you just stumbled upon and said, hey, this is pretty cool? or was, it, was there a little bit more uh, deliberation to, to the approach? I actually got a really early start to the community management space before it was formally called community management. I was actively involved in kind of the start of social for brands and launched several presences across multiple platforms um, and then also was kind of in the trenches developing the content um, even though it wasn't really a call to content strategy at that point in time. Um, and also was the one serving as the face of the brand and engaging on their behalf. Um, previous to that, even before I was kind of formally working, um, I was volunteering my time, you could say, for several friend, friends' bands, um, managing their MySpace presences, um, and engaging with their fan base and growing that to then drive traffic to their shows. So it was kind of a natural transition um, as community manager became a formal role to start with that and then shift to strategy. Well, given the fact that you're spending time in strategy now, my question to you is, and something that I think a lot of people think about is, is community management really a higher order role or is it, is it a lower order role? So meaning, is, it, is, is community management strategically valuable to the organization or is it, is it really a tactical necessity? Um, I think it's a little bit of both and it really depends on how the organization is using their community managers. Um, at the tactical level, yes, there, I mean there is a need to have a community manager and a need to have someone posting on your page and responding and handling the customer service side of things. Um, but I think a lot of brands are realizing that that's not necessarily enough. Um, we've gotten beyond the need to just have someone activating on your page to know that you know having an empty being on Facebook isn't enough. Um, it's that active presence. But I think that the community manager is finally kind of getting the respect it deserves and is fitting into a broader strategy and getting that recognition. Kate, from your perspective, um, is is community management good? Community management is it? Um, limited to the, the digital assets, so for instance, if I'm a community manager, should, should I be focused on managing either a Facebook page or a series of Facebook pages and allowing somebody else to manage the, the other assets that, that may be uh, in play, or is it something that, that, that a good community manager is like a utility infield where they can cover the gamut irrespective of the digital asset? Yeah, I think either, it depends on the scale. I mean, if you are a smaller brand and there's one person that can do it all, that's great. Um, I think it definitely is an integrated role and should be consistent across all channels. So you're speaking in the same tone and voice and responding in the same matter across multiple channels, whether that be one person doing it or a team working really closely together. Now, you touched on, uh, I think, an, an important word, and that is skill. So in, in, from your perspective, what are the top three or four skills that a good community manager has to have to do their job well? And, and from your standpoint as a social strategist, what should you be looking for as the outcome or the byproduct of, of those skills being employed really well within a community structure? 
Um, I think in an ideal world, a community manager could, should be social in nature. They should enjoy interacting with people and engaging and connecting people. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not just about talking back, talking to your consumer group. It's about really fostering that conversation and being involved in that. Um, I think a good community manager also has to have a strong writing and communication skills. Because yes, you are posting planned content, but I think some of the best community management moments, um, especially with this real-time engagement that's gotten a lot of spotlight, is kind of off the seat of your pants, you know, going in and making these decisions because you truly know the brand. Um, and then lastly, I think a really great community manager also is very organized and able to kind of keep things going and have, have multiple balls in the air as far as juggling a lot of different things at once, but always staying on top of everything. Well, I, there's one I think he forgot, and, and, it's, and it's based on an article that I saw that talked about the five trends for community management in 2013. And it is, is one of the, the skills of a great community manager being single and no life. <laughs> uh, because, well, I mean, it, seriously, the, the, the article that I saw was not very pretty. It, it, and one of the topics was, uh, or one of the challenges was, uh, work-life balance uh, will not improve in 2013 for community managers. So, so are community managers slaves to their job, Kate? Um, it's definitely not always a nine-to-five job. Um, I think we've all come to realize that the social space is a pretty immediate space, um, and it's very unpredictable. It doesn't matter if it's Saturday and you have really great plans, if a crisis emerges or something really critical happens, it's all hands on deck. Um, with that being said, I think it also needs to be realized by the organization that um, community management, especially within crisis and those kind of outside of the nine to five hours, are not a one man job, and it should be equal efforts uh, as part of a broader team. So I don't, I don't think it's really important that you kind of have no life and be single and be a slave to this job, but it is important to a give your community management the resource the manager the resources they need so they can have that balance and do not get burnt out because that's a big risk of putting that kind of schedule on someone is then losing that resource down the road um, but also kind of setting expectations off the bat where I'm sorry if this happens at 9 p.m. on a Friday night we're all gonna have to jump on this that said well gee that, that, that sounds an awful lot like agency life <laughs> Yeah, um, it sounds about right. Pretty familiar. Um, so why why does somebody want to get into uh, either a role of being a community manager or into the the career of community management? And and I guess my follow up to that is, all right, if I'm a community manager now, where does that lead? What what happens next? If I'm doing this for a year, is it, it where's what, what's my upward mobility within that structure? What, what's your opinion on? Um, I think ultimately, I think a lot of things that attract someone to a community management role and one of the big selling points is that it's a very rewarding experience. You're having this great sense of ownership and especially, I mean, a lot of these community management roles are lower level than some of the senior and VP level. So early on in your career, you're able to really own something and have it yours and have a lot of control over that um, and do a lot for the brand as far as building up. Um, their overall affinity and engagement and loyalty and there's a lot of things you can change and a really big impact you can have. Um, another benefit is it's a social job. You're kind of in the trenches and you're talking to people and you're really getting to know a lot and are not feeling just like, okay, I'm in my cube walls and this is all I have. You're part of something bigger. Um, Career-wise, I think this is where everyone's really figuring out what's next for the community manager and that's where you're seeing a lot of discussion about, okay, is there, do we have a director of community overseeing the community as a whole where they're not necessarily in the trenches or there's also then moving up to the strategy side of things like I'm in now where I'm not necessarily interacting with everyone but I'm leaning on the community manager as my right hand to tell me everything that the community is talking about and really teach me as much as possible about that community base. Is it fair to say based on that that the uh, the, the role or the trend for community management is, is shifting? I, you know. Uh, Back eight, seven, eight, six, seven, eight years ago, uh, when this was just starting to to, to to bubble to the surface, you know, brands thought that outsourcing community management would, was was a, was a really good thing. It was something that that uh, they could do to keep their hands clean and and and, and stay uh, focused on strategy 
And it was great for agencies because, you know, <laughs> billable hours, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like that pendulum is swinging back and that the brands are saying, no, 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 we really need to own this last mile of experience uh, with, with, with our customers because we, we can't put somebody uh, out that, that doesn't understand that. Um, so is that is that is that uh, an appropriate trend in, in, in your point uh, from your point of view and, and where do you see that going over the next year or two? I think there's always been a struggle to figure out who owned community management um, and social as a whole at first it was the battle between PR and marketing where does this fall under who should own this and now that that's kind of gotten sorted out and everyone's kind of figured out internally to each their own who's owning this area now it's okay are we doing this internally or are we having our agency do it and I think it's a situation where every agency and brand dynamic or every internal brand dynamic varies and it's a much different thing so I think it's about thinking what's best what can you handle resources wise internally do you have that expertise do you need to hire that expertise can you find that um, or should you really lean on your agency and create more of a partnership I don't think it should be and I think it was in the past more of the agency doing one thing, the brand doing the other, and they weren't very connected. Um, I think that if it that decision is made to be working with an agency, it's shifted into more of a partnership than just having one agency do all of the community management type things and having the brand just handle the strategy and marketing. So you said a little bit ago, um, what was it? You said that uh, this, so, that, that this job is a, an immediate job because it's so social that that you see things happen right now, but. Um, you know, there, there are implications to, to flying by the seat of your pants, right? I'm assuming that there's some form of training out there because there, there's, li there, there's liability, right, in, in, in poor community management. So my first question to you is, what happens if I screw something up as a community manager? And, and, and if I do screw things up, how, as a brand, do I rectify that by putting some training or best practices in place so that we mitigate those problems moving forward? Yeah, unfortunately there are a lot of risks and liability factors when it comes to community management um, and this can lead beyond just kind of bad PR and negative perceptions among consumers to things like boycotts and um, issues that can have a real impact on your sales and brand as a whole. Um, I think there's definitely a lot that can go wrong, especially in a very short amount of time. Um, we've seen a lot of media attention on these big issues. Um, when Applebee's had their crisis uh, last month or so, it was all over the media and we've kind of grown to love watching these things happen and go down in real time. You see everyone will take the screenshot of the first rogue tweet that goes out. We love to kind of watch this and put it under a microscope when a crisis is happening. Um, with that being said, I think that a lot of community managers are now going through more formal training and also agencies and brands are both setting up more formal guidelines than were done before. I think um, initially and kind of in early social days, the criteria for being a social man social community manager was kind of, okay, you know how to use Facebook and you're young, so I guess you get it, um, versus now it's looking at more qualifications, putting training in place, whether it is kind of internal guidelines for community management or going through something like the WOMCOM community management program. Um, I went through module three in the fall, the community strategist. And it's nice that these programs are really taking into account that community management isn't just one thing. That there's different segments within that um, that people can learn some structure and best practices and just share experiences all around. Yeah, that's great advice. Believe it or not, uh, our, our show time has flown by and we're at the end of our segment. Uh, Kate, you, you've given us some great thing, uh, things to think about. We appreciate your time. Uh, we do want to plug the fact that Wilma does have the community uh, manager uh, class. It is now available on demand, so if you don't want to go through it live, you can plug into it and do it at your leisure. You can learn more about that at Wilma.com. I want to thank uh, Kate Weingartner here for being our guest today, our community management expert and social strategist. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you get a chance to come to a future Wilma event, you'll get a chance to either see Kate speak again. She spoke at the last one, did a fabulous job. Uh, or at least come up and say hi to her. Uh, she's a good person to know. Um, I also want to uh, preview what we're going to be talking about on our next show in April. Uh, when we come back together, we're going to be talking about uh, word of mouth marketing and social media. And our guest is going to be author and social media maven, E. Katrina Walters from Intel. With that, signing off for Wilma TV. Have a good week. Mm -hmm.